Okay, I think we can probably um, get started today. Um, so thanks everybody for joining the CNF working group. Um, I've just once more dropped the link to the meeting minutes uh, in the chat. If you want to just add your name there, uh, then we can get started. Um, before we kind of jump into our topics today, does anyone have anything they'd like to add to the agenda? Okay, um, seeing nothing, uh, we can jump in. Just two things I wanna highlight um, for those that are interested. The first one is KubeCon Cloud NativeCon Europe is coming up in May. So it's May 4th through the 7th. And something that might be especially interesting to this group is that there's now going to be the Kubernetes on Edge uh, event at co-located to KubeCon. So it's the Monday before KubeCon actually starts. The CFP is currently open if you have some interesting edge use cases um, that you'd like to talk about or are interested in learning more about the edge. So uh, I think we can jump right in. Um, so I saw Jeff Salins is on the call. Um, do you wanna talk about these two pull requests that you have? Sure. Um, yeah, thank you for pulling them up. So you got, I, sorry, I missed last week, um, but the group is a large approved an existing pull request um, for we adding context. So specifically, like when we start talking about best practices, um, providing a little context, just because a best practice might be very use case specific. Um, for instance, there was in the discussions, a lot of talk, I always use this example of um, privilege containers, um, you know, the concept of police privilege, containers def being defined in root, et cetera, right? And so there are lots and lots of instances where that is absolutely the best practice. Um, there will be other instances though, like when we start getting into um, some of the more fuzzier definitions of what is and isn't a CNF, but like if a orchestration provisioning service comes with the CNF and it's built in and it needs to make requests of the infrastructure underneath, um, to do that, it's gonna have to have privilege, right? Like it's going to be able, it, it needs to be able to talk to the kernel and make requests. Um, least privilege one still applies. So just because it should only have the privileges it needs, but just in general, right? Like saying hard and fast, all containers would never need to talk to the kernel is um, a little misleading, right? So that got approved. Um, I talked to Taylor last week and we agreed that maybe the place that I originally stuck it was a little bit awkward on how it flows with the overall proposal. Um, layout and so we kind of just put it in a spot where we think it flows a little bit better it comes before the user stories um, but after the initial pitch that way you're not adding any like you know um i don't want to say negativity but basically kind of like already adding like counter arguments to your own proposal before you get to um you know the meat and potatoes so you get to the entire pitch uh, and then right before you hit user stories, you say, by the way, you know, it's for these specific types of things, it might not apply to these specific things. And then you can start building your user stories now that you have the context. Um, so that was just kind of the thought on why we moved where we think context should go. And then conversely, um, I had waited until we agreed that context was needed in the first place before attempting to go to the actual template and adding it there. And so um, I created a separate PR just in case we don't want to move it. We can work on the two independently for adding the context to the actual template itself now that it's been agreed upon in the other um, uh, proposal definition. Cool, well, thanks. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on this? Can you click the other view, Bill? The little uh, rep I viewed. Yeah. This one? Yeah. Yeah, so it's just essentially moving something higher and then adding a note in here um, about adding a warning when. Obviously, not all workload types are the same, so there should be a warning when things aren't the same. <laughs> so one comment to add. Um, the For those who weren't on the telecom user group, one of the uh, areas of discussion was how to how are we going to work with what's currently available and and potentially building from there and dealing with current active problems on networking deployment orchestration other things so um, 
the way that this, that bottom area for notes, constraints, and caveats ties in is to communicate where a best practice uh, may have problems. And that's the importance of this. So a best practice may be put forward, but it wouldn't help with a specific type of workload. And calling that out for those that um, it's not implicitly uh, visible is, is a good thing. And that the workload context at the top is supposed to help drive those type of uh, decisions and thoughts on whether or not the best practice is useful for you. Why are the user stories optional? Um, I, I think that probably needs to be changed based on the direction that we've been moving and adding this. That's a, a, they're not optional when we look at the outside and referencing, so it's having some context. Maybe it was just originally, we had so many items there, Watson. So I, th I think yeah, your suggestion so like is the, saying, let's not make it optional. Yeah, like the not optional and on the anti-context or whatever that section was where it's saying, oh, in these contexts, it's not this, I guess, best practice or whatever is not useful or whatever. No, I'd say make it so to where that part is also not optional for those user stories. If you're gonna put something in there, you should have a real reason why. So the, the user stories make sense um, for, for me to say it's not optional. So if you're gonna propose something, then, then you need to be able to say, how does it relate to the real world? The reason yeah, why we're making- Yeah, at least make up a user story. At least yeah. have them to where they write a user story and other people, if we're gonna have them separate, it links to a user story. And then people can either vote on it, make a survey off the user story, or whatever. There's, you make up a user story and it has zero people supporting it, then that's the strength of your user story. The argument for your best practice proposal. And so, to, yeah, um, so on the user story specifically, when, you're, when you have a best practice that you want to talk about, then, but you're not maybe you don't even have a full user story, but you're saying they're using this um, type of methodology process or whatever you're looking at over in the Kubernetes world for other applications. And it seems like we should use it here, but you can't quite come up with the user story. You're probably better off not creating a pull request, but instead go create a, a GitHub discussion and say, I'm trying to, I'd like to have help on creating the user story. So that by the time we get in and, and you say, let's create this as a, a pull request, we think we found a solid, a solid best practice proposal, then you have a user story defined. Um, so I, I guess I, I'm agreeing and we need to, and maybe Watson, you could go do a pull request against the, the template and say, let's make this non-optional. So by the time someone does a pull request, we're saying it would be blocked until you complete all the items that are non-optional. Um, I wanted to separate that from the notes and caveats section. So when you get into the notes and caveats, so that this is essentially a catch-all. So we may want to break that out and not just have it with all those constraints and caveats. So we may, notes could just be reference uh, tied in with like the references. So any, any other details that are helpful to understand the best practice, that's what this is for. And I don't think we should have an, a, a required note section, but if, if the caveats is something that we want to say is non-optional, then we should do a, a change on this. Are you suggesting that that's non-optional or was I misunderstanding? Yep. It? Yeah, basically every architectural decision has some type of trade-off. So you basically have some problem if you don't know what your trade-offs are. So it should be in there. I would rather it be called a trade-off, but caveat works. 
All right. So the, um, then that should be, it seems like that should be split from that section and just not have it at the end, that third, third piece that you're there, Bill, if you highlight, we have three pieces there, notes, constraints, and caveats. And we could make the caveats another section, maybe right, right below user stories. And then you have the notes and constraints as optional, but you have the trade-off or caveat, whatever it want to be called. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, would you be up for doing a pull request for that, Watson, just to split that off? Sure. Okay. Right. Well, thanks. And feel free to rename it if, if you think trade-offs helps with, um, I'm, I'm guessing that you're saying on the language trade-off would communicate what you're you're saying any best practice is going to have trade-offs or any solution that's proposed will have its own trade-offs yeah um okay so thanks um watson for making the pull request on that now i guess going back to like this um pr so this is just moving something like up above. Um, I know, Jeff, I think you made this just earlier today. So I think I'd be happier if we, oh, four days ago. Um, like, I'm happy to approve it as is, but um, I don't know if other people want to like have time to add their comments. Or is, is there any objection to moving forward? This is the first iteration. Like Watson, would you be ob object to moving it forward on? There was some language added to the existing and then your pull requests come after or do you want, do you object to moving it just forward? Okay. Great, so I think we can probably merge these pull requests now. Great. And okay, great. Um, so thanks Jeff for making those pull requests and for getting that merged gin and for to Watson for um, opening up a, a PR to help change that too. Um, great, uh, so point two, so making the goals more concise. Um, so this was, changing around the, so this is in the readme and it's like basically changing around the goals of the group. Um, it's a little bit of like wordsmithing. I don't know, Taylor, if you wanna add something more? So the, I guess at the highest level, um, there's two things. Number one, we're moving away from talking about required or conformance type words. So moving away from that language towards this language of um, best practices. So we're putting forward best practices that could be um, relevant to, to either um, developers, so you're you're developing CNFs, or you're uh, maybe you're an uh, an act uh, an ops operator ops team. Sorry, not just an operator, but you're on an ops team. And is this best practice relevant to you? So moving forward towards that as far as language, and then the other part would be um, thinking about networking in general. So that was another earlier topic. If you're on the tug call, and and shrinking that in, and then a little bit more focus around uh, Kubernetes. So it's that's really the language we've been using that other places. So this is trying to update the charter to to match that. And there was some of these that was uh, I think from earlier, the early parts of the charter that was put together. And then I see you've expanded a few of those things, Kubernetes versus. Uh, do you mind if I commit that? I, I'm looking, I just, uh, I hadn't I read those. So efficiency, 
versus effectively. There's some comments about even removing some of these because they're duplicate, but I think we can do that in another iteration. Um, I'm gonna, I'll just commit that I'm, I'm good either way. Are you, are you committing? Most, I, I committed yours. You should be able to refresh and Okay. Most of what you're doing is grammar. I see Robbie did a yeah, approval. Robinson. Jeffrey did an approval. Approve on this. Can you do the other view um, for the difference? So that's kind of shows a, we're, me, we're primarily removing a lot of the extra words. Yeah. Um, so I think we have four approvals now, unless there's a lot so of. So any objections or questions on this? Well, I just kind of go a back question. to that other view. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Well, the, this, uh, just regarding that in the first bullet, you are uh, removing the cloud, at least dropping bit about the cloud native principles uh is that okay like um the way that you uh, describe like it's just identifying best practices but it's not referring anything to, to cloud native principles is, is that is that it, it's not reducing the scope of this bullet or is keeping the same that, that probably is my question <laughs> so that's a good comment. Um, I guess the first part would be the rest of the charter. Um, if you look at the whole context, um, cloud native principles and um, Kubernetes native best practices is still there. If you look at those two goals by themselves, then at the, the change does drop that, but that's, that's not the intention. And um, these are, would be identify Kubernetes native and at a general, more general level, level would be cloud native best practices. So that that could be explicit to identify um, Kubernetes and cloud native best practices for CNFs. That would be how I would write that. The main part was to remove the portion on using to, to be used to demonstrate how well software adheres to cloud native principles. So that's not the intent really. What we're saying is whether you're a CNF developer, you're developing software that, that could be run on Kubernetes, that's to be run on Kubernetes, or you're a, an operator trying to find um, different networking applications that you're gonna use. And you're, you're handing this over to your ops team to identify this. We're hoping that the best practices will help developers to build better software that runs in Kubernetes and the ops team to see software that helps them do the lifecycle management they're gonna do. So that's what the language is about. So not just saying we're demonstrating, that's good, but it's actually helping their lives. But putting the cloud native back in front of identify the four best practices could be a good idea. Before where? Um, so I, I, we're, what we lost here was the cloud native principles yeah. or cloud native. So it would be between, it'd be right after to identify cloud native best practices or cube native, whatever we want to say on here, but you could put cloud native. Yep. There we go. Does that address the concern that was being voiced about cloud native um, oh, yeah. Yeah. being lost. Okay. And as I said, it's not removed from the whole charter. It was just removed at that sub part. Mm -hmm. uh, any other comments or suggestion, um, objections, any other comments or objections to merging right now?
Okay, it's merged. Great. Um, also, thank you for the comment and bringing it back. Was that uh, Victor that said that? Yeah, no, that was me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you um, for helping out with that. Cool. Um, the next one is Taylor's. Um, so these one actually, these two next two actually kind of go hand in hand. Um, one is the user stories issue, and the other one is uh, the use case folder. Um, and I don't know, Ian, do you want to, is Ian on the call? I am. Do you feel like this, what uh, the use case folder address a little bit of the user stories or would you like them to be kind of like separate things or how would you? Yeah, I, I think for the time being, we stick them in there. Um, this doesn't have to be perfect apart from anything else, but secondly, it just confuses. It, it's not always clear in people's mind when something's a use case and something's a user story, but um, with apologies, because I didn't write my documents last week, I was going to put together the a, a grand overarching user story that pretty much walks through um, the, the general deploy and use cycle um, saying, you know, roughly operators and architects decide how this works and are going to want to go through these stages. I'll stuff it in the user, in the use case folder. And then I think actually with a concrete example in front of us, we'll be better off able to decide whether that's where it belongs or if we need to do something else. Um, so I'm inclined to say, leave it alone right now and we'll figure it out if it turns out that things look wrong. Okay. And then do you feel like we could kind of close this issue if we can merge this for now at least? Um, or do you feel like this, this, this is something you'd still want to leave open? I can't remember which one that is. Hang on a second. It's um, number 38. I can also put it in the chat. Well, that's a, a okay, get, yeah, that's you're saying the GitHub my, issue my... versus the, the pull request yeah. for the user, use case folder? Yeah. I mean, we can also quick. We can also walk through this pull request and kind of go through some of the comments here. Um, so this pull request forty six um, is like the like the last two, just one iteration. So we can come back um, over this and and add more, just like we've been doing in the pull request itself. But we don't have to have it to perfect if it doesn't encompass everything. It's a structure. Can you click on the other view um, yeah. again? Thanks, Bill. Um, so one thing to point out is we're using the wording of networking use cases because it's been talked about many times that the networking applications can be used in the telco world and also outside. You have the same application that's used many places. So we wanna make sure that the use cases aren't restricted where they're gonna have a larger application. And then in, I believe in the, could have been Slack or it could have been on the discussion board. Ian pointed out that there's going to be both use cases and best practices that may not even be networking but are applicable so even though this mm. says on this the discussion i mean on the pr it says networking use cases the folder itself is use case and when we're requesting use cases if you have one that you may not think is networking specific but it's applicable outside then feel free to add something it's we're not we're not limiting it to just networking if it's applicable. Um, but yeah. the the first part of this is we're creating a, a folder just to mainly talk about a very important area, and this is use cases. Um, I don't know that we need a, a user story, but I do want to point out for those who don't know, a use case and a user story are two different things. So we may need to expand on this to say we. If, if you have a user story or a use case, then you can put those in, but this is getting started. So we have this use case folder where we can add 
larger documents that we want to keep around, like Ian was talking about, if you have a smaller use case and we have it fully fleshed out, then we'll get pull requests in there. If you don't really have anything other than maybe you just have the title of a use case, you've seen it, someone's talking about it, you know it would be relevant to bring over here, then probably that first discussion topic, which is linked there at, in that first paragraph, how to add. So there's, we have a discussion, long GitHub discussion, just add, add the, add the title, maybe a link, whatever else. If you already know about a, yeah, right there. So you can just add to this, um, add to this topic and we can sit here and, and keep um, adding more as we're going along. But maybe you have a, a use case already that you can describe, but you're not yet ready with uh, enough details. We'll then create a GitHub discussion topic. That's that second bullet point under how to add. So add a discussion topic. It's, uh, I'm sorry, not bullet point, second paragraph under how to add. So just create a brand new discussion topic, and then you can put inline images, whatever you want to do, link to external um, material, and we can start building it out before we do a full write-up and add it into the use case folder. And then once we're actually ready to add something into the use case folder, because we're saying we're planning on referring to this from the different best practices, we're going to actually link to these use cases. Um, make sure that we have all the content, number one. And then the other point to point out is whether you have a single file or you create a folder with lots of content, we do want to keep as much material within the repo itself rather than say link to an external Google doc. So we don't want a use case markdown that just says, go read the real one over here or a PDF or something else. So we want to try to bring the content internally and I, I think tooling and stuff around that's like to be determined, but just think of intent of trying to go internal and as much as possible have the content go inline. So we don't want to just upload a PDF to the Git repo. Yeah, so to expand on that, there's two aims there. One is our use cases are version controlled because if we change our mind, we want to know we've changed our mind. If you basically refer out to a Google Doc, then um, there's two problems with that. One is the link can break, right? You delete the Google Doc because you've moved on. The other is that you can change the document without going through any sort of approval process. So um, anything that's really kind of concretely meaningful to, to the use case wants to be actually committed so that it's version controlled. Um, and as I say, the, the other part of that is external references links age out. We, we want to make sure that that doesn't happen to us if it's got material information that we don't want to lose. Uh, editability, I think, is pretty clear, right? If, if the document is, if somebody embeds a PDF and it's not got any source and it's uneditable, um, and more to the point, it's not even diffable, um, if it's a whopping great binary, so Word documents will fall into the same category then um, you're basically just putting a barrier to entry and to understanding of what changes are being made as well. I can't diff two Word documents. So if you change the spelling mistakes in a Word document, I can't tell. So Markdown is much favored on that. Yeah, um, I think we were also having a conversation on diagrams and I'm not saying that we favor a tool over others, but I would point out that draw.io you can embed editable PNGs or editable SVGs, which at least means that somebody stands a chance of being able to change your, your nice PNG if you put it in there. So just bear that in mind when you're selecting your tools to illustrate your use case. Yeah, so I see we have a couple different discussions here. Um, and I don't know the current status of these Taylor, did you make this change? So relating real world use cases? 
Um, I didn't. So the, the main thing here was splitting off uh, best practices by itself was kind of incomplete, but if we split those two, we, so just completing the wording there, but feel free to, uh, based on that last comment, the, um, the last comment in that thread, they seem to agree with that. So we just have the relating and not, we don't really need the best practices. Uh, so you can do a suggestion if you do it. I don't know, can I do it in here? Yeah, no, so. but do it above. Yeah. yeah, go back to the very top of it where he suggested. It's just right here. Yeah. So. Yeah, that works. I just adjust that one part. Okay, so I think we can mark this one as resolved then. Okay, uh, and we have Robbie. Um, I guess this is the discussion. Do we want like a kind of a template or not um, going for this or going forwards for this? I think we should. Like, I think there's got to be some kind of distinction between this is a use case we all agree because. In the previous call, we were talking about potentially using those as like foundational pieces to then start building best practices off of, or when we start talking about like the orchestration task force, et cetera. And I guess if there's not like a team, if we're not going to kind of like expect certain things to describe a use case, then I don't see there being very much of a distinction between what's in the discussion boards and what's, you know, drafted in a document and checked in. I agree that we need templates. Um, my suggestion right now is let's um, move forward with the request for use cases, and then we start building out the templates either next. So if someone wants to take on that, then they feel free to, or organically as we start to see use cases. If we actually had, let's say 10 use case PRs, because people are, were ready, they just said, I have all the content, I have SVGs, I'm ready to um, create PRs, I'm happy to have that problem. Right now we don't have any use cases uh, fully fleshed out at all. Um, we do need a template, but I'm, I'm just saying, I don't think we have to block asking for contributions at a minimum contributions to the discussion board before we move forward. Yeah, I guess, um, is it okay if we create an issue for it and then uh, just resolve this conversation for now? And then we can come back later with a PR to add the template. Yeah, I'm fine with resolving this comment. Um, I do at the top though, some of the wording choices I would like us to look at it. I put some okay. stuff and I think we kind of skip past that one, but this one I'm fine with. Like, I'm fine with just getting something down instead of quibbling forever on some of these initial PRs. So I'll, I'll create the issue for that um, after this. And then for the wording one, uh, I'll be honest, like knowing Ian too, I uh, re like refresh there's... your page. I've just put a diff in for that. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, so I haven't, hang on, let me finish that review and then I will put a diff <laughs> in for that. <laughs> okay. Right now it's in. Hate it when it does that. 
Sorry, I was trying to get rid of the passive voice at the same time, so it's not quite the wording that Jeff used. Is agreed upon is is just awkward. Um, it, it basically says, you know, this will happen without your assistance. Don't we worry about it? So, I mean, your people were speaking English before mine, so I'm I'm down to take your lead on this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, the um, yeah, I, I mean, you're, the you're, big you're, thing you're, I was you're just... welcome to submit it in Flemish if that makes you happier. <laughs> um, no, I mean, the big thing for me was just a couple things is I think like most clearly, like, I don't know, just, I, I know you were, you know, slacking me and saying you don't think it's quite as strong as I do. I just, sometimes when you, you say stuff like that, like, I just know that there's executives in my company that will latch onto that. And then like, they just like run amok, um, you know, when you use st stronger language like that. And then the other thing is, is in which you put it in, in your, um, your rework is, specifically you know tying it into like the kubernetes piece right um because once again too i just think there was a little too much ambiguity of you know kubernetes best practice versus cloud data best practice versus you know i know you are sneakily underneath behind the scenes and like well i could just say this is a best practice because we agreed upon it. and it doesn't matter if it even uses kubernetes um so just being a little bit more succinct and direct here i think is helpful and i, I i'm cool with um Bill, what I, I, Ian reworded this to. Yeah, I, I don't care whether it says Kubernetes or not. I don't think it's necessary. But on the other hand, I have no objection to it. As for the strength of the wording, it's more in the eye of the reader than the writer. And it's the reader that we care about. So again, totally fine. OK, great. Uh, so it looks like we've resolved all the conversations on this. Um, so unless anybody has anything else they want to uh, bring up, do it. we can probably do it. Merge this one too. Okay, great. We're just clicking right along in this meeting. Yeah, I don't the, hate to use the um, the. Um, um, trite phrase, but the the perfect is the enemy of the good. We can always accept these changes and change them again later. Is yeah. nothing wrong with that? Yep, exactly. Um, this is another one that's been um, kicking around for a while. Uh, and there's been quite a long discussion. Um, there's a lot about this, like defining the actors, and I think this will play into the use cases. If anybody's interested in writing up, kind of. A summary of all these discussions. I think there's quite a lot of material here and now we just need to refine it into kind of like a, a first draft. Yeah. So if there's anybody interested. I, I, I want to go at this before we're done as well. So um, I haven't commented on that yet, but I, I think we can, I don't actually have much objection. I just think that's very fine grain. So I wonder whether there's some way of basically summarizing maybe the ones that we care the most about. I would go to the top on that, so that not the the bottom area. Can I um, maybe share my screen for a moment on this, and then Absolutely. Ian, you can talk to it. Yep. Yep. Okay. I think you should be able to. Let's see. It. Okay, it looks good. So um, I've tried to keep coming back and updating the top, and which I think you can see uh, this way if you. I don't know if y'all are able to see yourself when you're on the on the discussion board, but you if if you hopefully can see the revisions. So the revisions are as I tried to merge what everyone was talking about and coming to some type of um, consensus around it. What it doesn't have is the last updates. Like it doesn't have this one, Ian. It doesn't have um, a. Uh, I think system integrators are, are there, but it may not have this one here. And then this longer thread, there's a part right here, I think, Jeff, that you added. It may not have those. Oh, the purchaser. I think the purchaser is probably the biggest one. But if, if you start here and look at what's there and then go look to see what questions or comments have been added, that's where I would start because I am trying to keep this updated to whatever is the, mm -hmm. the most current consensus. But that was the last one was on December 9th. So there's been a little bit more. 
So we tried to separate the different orgs from the actors. This context part is, we don't have to do that every time, but the point was you may have a CNF developer that is at a service provider. They may have an internal team and you may have a ops team person that's similarly, they're outside, they're inside any of these. So we try to separate those from the org. And um, mm -hmm. system integrator, they're added here. I don't know where that purchaser would be, but the idea that the different actors, those higher level actors could be in different places and trying to move towards something that's more usable across the board. But I go ahead, Ian, if, if you have some direct comments, if we want to do this a discussion or if we want to have another iteration on this outside of the group. Well, I think it's going to be both, honestly, but if we discuss it, then we'll get the iteration right. So I think you're right that it, it's, there are a set of roles that are completely independent of which organization they're in, right? And then there are a set of organizations that matter because they tend to define the way the roles communicate with each other a little bit. So for instance, if I've got a service provider and it's a fairly common example um, that's buying in everything, right? They're buying the platform from one group, they're buying them CNS for three or four other vendors. They have a, they either employ a system integrator or they are a system integrator, but there's definitely system integration that's happening. Um, so the roles exist, but what we're actually doing is describing the situation on the ground, which we could do separately um, in an extra section. Um, the roles, I think we need to be a little bit more wordy about um, what the roles do. And I would point out, and you're going to argue with me, that an infrastructure developer is not a CNF developer. So that one's just basically slightly, the tree is a little bit wonky. But um, uh, yeah, and, and then you might argue some of these things are not so much roles as hats that a role wears, right? When, when a CNF operator is got his security hat on, he's looking at it in a certain specific way in a particular, with a particular mindset. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that there is, there is almost certainly a security team. I'm not arguing that, but I, I don't think, I, I think it's better to lump that into operator behavior than it is to try and call out a security person and say that they act in a certain way. Um, so, you know, it might be easier to, to kind of describe the perspectives that a role will have on a problem. Um, are you suggesting that we have the roles as the main focus and then anyone yes. can step uh, in? Uh, and, and maybe rather than trying to do it in a bullet pointed list, we try and give a, a, a paragraph or two to each role to explain how we're thinking of them. Because, you know, two words we know from past experience, like, for instance, network, to take one example, um, are ambiguous enough that you don't necessarily get the detail down. So, you know, putting some words on that basically says, we are thinking of a CNF developer as this. If you want to argue with that, then you can put a pull request in on this document. And if you don't want to, then we're at least not being ambiguous about what we mean. I think the end goal of having um, paragraphs would be where we want to go. This this was this discussion and maybe the bullets or this was all just a start. But eventually, so, what we'd so, want so is the, the, the repository. But do we want? I, I think the actors are relevant as well. But um, if it do we want to to start a new discussion just for the roles or have the roles as um, something I, I think to I'm realizing that if this is a discussion, then the answer is probably that we've got enough um, information in here and common thinking that we could put a pull request together, trying to actually put that into a document, because at this point, we're actually trying the document so that we're not, as you say, editing the first element in the discussion all the time is it's maybe time, it's maybe ready. Because if you're really telling us what we're ready to say, I mean, even if it's slightly under debate, then actually 
you know, commenting on the document would probably be the way to further this. All right. Um, I'm wondering as far as the, you, you're saying that we could have paragraphs for the roles, but what are the roles? If we're going to have that, then we could have a list. I, I'm, so, I mean, it, definitely from been... moving to a document, that's possible. Um, sounds like we may need to, maybe the interest on moving forward on this discussion is here. here. And so now people are wanting to have a, something that we can update quicker. So a Google, a Google Doc or whatever might be easier, but it seems like we still need roles. So the, like what is, what are these roles that we're talking about? Well, I mean, the ones I've been working with are effectively the operator who is actually running a CNF day to day. The network architect who's deciding and describing how the CNF fits into their network long before it's actually implemented. Um, the CNF developer who's actually making a runnable CNF. Um, the platform developer who's making the Kubernetes that the CNF is running on, whether that's enhancing that Kubernetes or deploying it, it both of those really, you know, the piece of software that the operator is going to use. Um, and I think the system integrator, because there's a whole bunch about how this is configured and poked and prodded when it's running, um, where you can arguably say it's a system integration task because, you know, you do it before the operator lays hands on it and you continue to do it while the operator is using it to make their job easier. So those are the roles I'd stick with and then try and, you know, there's a question of which companies do those roles live in and how strong are the lines of communications with them, which is, you know, you could provide example context and whether or not they look at things with different perspectives, like, you know, the, the CNF operator needs to satisfy the security requirements of their customers. How are those requests coming in? What are the sort of things they're going to be asked to do? Kind of. So that would be a perspective, an example of a perspective. And that is a proposal for debate. So the silence is not encouraging. Yeah, I think. Uh, Go ahead, Taylor. Well, I was, can we add those? Can you send, I don't know if you're pulling them all off your head. I, I didn't get over uh, here fast I'll, enough I'll, to type I'll, them I'll, out or if you can I'll type them in. I'll add something to the bottom of the discussion so that it's written down. And then okay. we can take it offline and discuss where that pull request, you know, where the actual changes want to sit in the repo and, and get it written up. Cool. Um, Taylor, I guess now that you're sharing the screen, can you just go back to the agenda doc? You know, we have I'm gonna, a I'll stop and let you okay. share. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so we have about eight minutes left. So I guess we might not have a full discussion um, on these last couple of issues, but I definitely want to get to them. I know there's kind of two ones actually i think i'll skip over this one for right now um i know i saw ruben was on the call and he made this pull request the to read me um ruben do you want to just quickly just like walk through this um, yes of course um it, it's a very simple thing about the operation of cnf i felt the uh the scope just deploy and manage was a bit was a bit too narrow and I much preferred the way um, I much preferred the wording of lifecycle management. Now, excuse if my wording is not English completely perfect. Some other people can turn that out better than me. But I hope you understand uh, you understand uh, the content. So it's just about speaking first about lifecycle management for CNF operators, and then giving an example um, because there's I, I felt is more to it than just deploy and management. I mean config management, upgrades, deployment, uh, remove it. And I, I could think of tons of other things. That's all. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is great. Um, I guess, are there any comments um, on this pull request? I don't know if uh, Lisa is also adding, saying she likes the addition of lifecycle management. Um, I know this just came in four hours ago, so um, I wouldn't merge this today, but I'm happy to like approve this, but I just want to make sure 
other people have time to um, comment on it too, if that makes sense for you, Ruben. Yes, of course, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, thank you for that pull request though. Um, so I'm gonna leave this open for another week just so that um, people have time to look at it. And um, if you have things you want to add, the pull request is here. Um, the other thing that we have is uh, CNF candidates for assessment. I know there's just some comments here. Um, if anybody, one idea was to start with, if we are gonna have those, um, like use cases to actually pull down some CNFs and uh, see what the problems are. And so if anybody has any ideas um, who would be interested in providing a CNF uh, to see what the potential like use cases are and what best practices we can pull from them, um, please add it to the discussion here so that we can kind of get forward, move forwards and start adding some use cases to the folder that we now have. Um, and then, so we have about five minutes left. So I just wanted to touch on a, a couple last things. Um, so last week we announced, uh, we are gonna be looking for chairs for the working group um, very soon. Uh, we were supposed to have the governance uh, PR um, because at CNCF, we really believe in open governance, having the governance PR ready for this meeting. But unfortunately we didn't uh, quite get it there, but it will be, um, at some point this week, we'll have that and we'll hopefully, and we'll discuss that at the meeting next week. Um, so that'll decide on how this group will be uh, governed going forwards. And then after that, we'll have elections for the chairs to lead this group. Um, Bill, let me, let me add to that a little bit. So the main, uh, the, just like all the rest of the stuff that we've been talking this iterative process, so we, the charter exists right now. We have some information, of course, already in the charter. The governance section is um, um, empty practically. So that the parts that we're gonna be adding into there are uh, starting with what are roles? What are the different roles within the governance portion? So we'll be adding to that. That's the first thing that's gonna be built um, created based on what exists in existing CNF, CNCF, SIGs, and working groups. So if you go and look at the TOC SIG formation roles, or you go look at some of the other SIGs, it's based on that. And um, we'll be pulling from those to create what's what we're going to be using. And then the, the other part is about um, the pro uh, process around um, elections. So there's many other things within the governance that will be going forward eventually as needed, but those are the, the two main parts that we're trying to focus on. And then if, if you missed last week for the elections, what we're looking towards is uh, on the, we'll do a nomination process and that'll be nominating for those roles. And then um, we'll have the election and, and help terms and stuff like that. Yeah, um, thanks Taylor. And then the last thing on the agenda is maybe Taylor, do you wanna give a two minute summary of what happened in the TUG meeting and kind of the discussion there? Sure, so the TUG um, topic was around primarily around a um, group of, a group that's formed, I guess we can stick with the name right now, task force, the ne networking orchestration task force and what that's been about. And then how does it relate to, I, I would say, I'll just say all the rest of the CNCF um, telecom and networking focused efforts that we've been doing. And that was, um, there's, uh, we really came to a decision that there's two main parts. One was finding the problem statement around the networking and orchestration and what are we trying to do there? Uh, gap analysis, other things, and how does that fit? And then um, 
looking for potential solutions that are there right now and presenting those. So presentation of solutions and other things, we're gonna have a follow-up for a project called Eno on the next telecom user group, um, probably before next month, potentially. And then the problem analysis and putting forward those is gonna move into a discussion topic, probably a new one, and then maybe become some documents in the CNF working group. So we're going to continue to move forward and um, on that because it is uh, related to multiple groups. Yeah, thanks, Taylor. And that was perfect timing. So it's now the top of the hour, unless anybody else has something they want to add right now. Thanks, everyone, for coming today. And uh, yeah, have a nice day. Later, everyone. Cheers. Yeah.